Welcome to the Rock is George podcast. I'm your host, George Dion, and this is episode 85. Thank you for tuning into the podcast, whether it's through our website, rockisgeorge.com, or through our YouTube page, or on one of the many podcasting streaming apps, or at the loudest.com on the planet, knac.com. My guest for this episode is Jeannie Ann Smith, vocalist of the doom metal band Avatarium. I have to say, I haven't really sought out too much doom metal in my lifetime. I think the name sort of has a stigma. You think very hard and heavy, but that's not what Avatarium sounds like at all. In fact, I listened to their latest album, Death Wears Your Sting, and it kind of seduced me. It brought me right in. Uh, There was something uh, emotional or dramatic or theatrical about the album. The album is out now, and it's through AFM Records. So here's Jeannie Ann Smith of Avatarium to tell you more about it. If I knew absolutely nothing about Avatarium, how would you describe the band's music to me? Well, how much time do we have? Because <laughs> if, you, if you ask me, you have to listen to the music. We describe it as dark, heavy, and poetic. I think that's a fitting description for your mm. latest album, Death, Where Is Your Sting, that comes out this Friday, AFM Records. Uh, This album you put together took a little longer than it normally does for you guys to put together an album because of, you know, the world events and and no live shows and being locked away from everybody. Yeah, of course. It was a whole different process than we used to, of course. And But there's been so many changes for all of us. Of course, we we were affected when it came to the the whole production as well. You have released a few songs ahead of the album's release. And usually I ask artists to kind of get into the meaning behind the music. So I'll ask you if you're comfortable with that, because you, th- you said earlier when I asked you to describe what you sound like, you said it's, it's you have to really hear it. So do you want to talk about what what's behind the meanings of the songs or should the listener really just hear it? The, the latter, I would say, the listener should hear it. But since you're, you're interviewing me and I, I uh, you know, it's to, 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 to dress the, the thoughts and, and the emotions you have when it comes to your own music in, in words. I think the greatest gift uh, as an artist uh, that you could get as an artist is when people listen to your music and it, it becomes their own their own music, their own thoughts and emotions and free association. Um, so so um, I'm actually I'm enjoying being interviewed and and talking about the new record when I, I hear all these jour- music journalists and uh, people um, from all around having their thoughts and and about what we've done (laughs) so and it's I think that's um it's a privilege and that's quite rewarding because I mean for me now it's it's six months since we we put the final touch on this album and uh uh, so I'm 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 both very it's difficult to sort of free your sort of free yourself from all the details and all the hard work also it's I think I've already moved on. <laughs> so it's somewhere in between. Yeah. Well, what I do know is that you wrote one song entirely on your own uh, lyrically, and that was Death Wears Your Sting, the album's title track. And from what I gather, it's it's possibly about kind of getting through the hard times that we have been going through for the last two years. No, I actually wrote all the lyrics on, on the album. Uh, and I've co-written all the songs on the, this album so and we wrote them together most of them me and Marcus Udell but I've written all the lyrics and on our last album The Fire I Long For we wrote most of the material as well and so it's uh, there are different topics but from the beginning we, since the beginning and it's been 10 years now since we released our first album um, we've we've dealt with these big existential questions, life and death, which is quite traditional, I would say, in Doom. Since the beginning, I mean, we've, we've 
I think we push the boundaries for what doom uh, doom metal could be. And I think that that what is what made Avatar quite special and unique. We use our Swedish folk traditions and bring them to to the table and and of course all our references and, and what sort of probably um, made a bit special is I have a quite jazzy touch or um, a quite jazzy sort of way of, sort of phrasing and, and uh, how I go about with the vocals. And when that met the, the sort of landscape of Leif Edling landscape of, of doom or hard rock, something quite magical happened. Uh, and I think we, we were quite courageous to, to do that. But, you know, I can only sing like I do. And, uh, but if you look back in, in sort of musical history, it's these lucky accidents when, when people have the courage to, to try new things that the magic happens. So 10 years ago, I think we, yeah, I think we pushed the boundaries a, a bit and, and we continue that journey. Well, your question was about the specific song, Death Racer Sting. And probably I didn't realize it from the beginning, but there is, probably there is a, a bit of a, besides from being a phrase out of the Corinthian letters, oh, death, where is thy sting? Uh, oh, grave, where is thy victory? I don't know if you know it. Uh, are you familiar with that? I'm not. No, you're not. Well, it wasn't, a, I, I didn't have a biblical reference uh, myself, probably it was more sort of influenced by Bergman as a Swede, such as I am. Um, I don't know if you know, uh, if you've seen the movie, Hundin uh, Seglet, it's, um, it's this iconic scene where the, the male character in the beginning meets, meets with death and have a very personal conversation with death. And uh, uh, the song Death, where you're staying on, on our new album is is such a conversation, a very personal conversation with death. And I think we've, whether we want it or not, we've, we've all been closer to death through the pandemic than we've been before. And so it was a very sort of important theme to process probably for me as well. You mentioned sort of bringing your, what you described as jazzy voice to kind of doom metal uh, genre. I kind of hear like a lot of Broadway or theater in your voice and kind of sort of that. Uh, the only way I could describe it is like the beginning of a James Bond movie, that 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 sultriness kind of cinematic thing. Yeah, well, it's well, many, many seem seem to find that reference because it's a bit dra dramatic. And and I, I, I can I can absolutely understand why you're sort of hearing that, because I as a teenager and still I'm. I, well, I think I was probably 14 or 15 when I discovered Barbara Streisand and, and I just love Barbara Streisand and, uh, and, and probably I'm not super aware of how much she's affected my, <laughs> my, my own style or way to sing. I mean, because she's, you know, untouchable hero. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, so I, I I can understand that you she's probably somewhere in in in, in my uh, reference uh, bank or, or what what we should call it your influences yeah the new album death wears your sting comes in some great uh, configurations you have vinyl available in three different colors. You have this, uh, the CD version, it's gonna be streaming. You have this limited uh, two CD yearbook with kind of a whole picture documentary of you guys putting the album together. Um, yeah. yeah. Is that something important to you to kind of give uh, fans a, a little something special, especially like I would say like super fans? Yes, of course, of course. Um, so we made this yearbook that includes uh, sort of behind the scenes photo photographs taken by Niklas Palmklint here in Stockholm. And I've worked with the layout on, on that yearbook and it looks a bit like, a, yeah, it's, it's a very nice coffee table book. So I hope that the, our, our fans will, will like that. It's, 
it, it's in line with the rest of our artwork. It's, of course, there's this clear reference to the do metal shanger that isn't minimalistic, um, but it's combined with a, a Scandinavian aesthetic, I would say, it's, that is very sort of clean and minimalistic. And I love it when these two worlds can meet. And so that's, I, I think it's uh, the artwork and the cover is, is reflecting uh, what we, what you uh, will hear on the record as well. This is also your first album with AFM Records. How did you guys end up signing with them? We had, um, uh, I think we'd written four tracks and we presented them to a number of, of labels and we got uh, several offers, uh, luckily. Um, so we chose to to go with AFM because we a nice connection and we we so the human contact and, and how it felt um, is important so we chose to to work with them so far we're new with each other and but so far they're doing a great work and we'll have to see what happens next a founding member leaf edling stepped down due to health issues in 2017 does he still contribute to the band's music in any way well we co-wrote co-wrote a song with him we we had written um so the embryo or the core to the song stockholm on on the album we asked Leif if he wanted to co-write that song with us and so and he said yes and so i i and, and i think it turned out pretty well uh, that track um it has this epic riff, and which is very significant for for Leif Edling, and uh, in the beginning, and then, then at the end, and uh, it's got acoustic uh, guitars on on the on the verse, and then it's a uh, it's big chorus, uh, so it's uh, also uh, uh, it has its similarities with the structure of Moon Horse, that is a, a song that the one of the first songs that we ever released. Um, actually it was our first single and it's nine minutes long so that's which is pretty pretty amazing for a single these days but yeah so, so the song Stockholm we co-wrote with Leif and at the same time because I mean the, the, the whole process of making this album has taken two years and at the same time Marcus Hudel who is a guitar player and producer and also happens to be my husband has produced the new Candlemas album and it has been done in, in parallel because in, in, it also took them two years to finish their album. Um, and I'm actually singing with Johan on a track on the new Candlemas album. So if you want to, if you haven't heard Avatarium and, and want to find out what, what I sound like, you can also listen to the new Candlemas album. Avatarium. <laughs> recently played the summer breeze open air 2022 is that your first return to live performing we played in germany this last fall as well but that was at the end of the pandemic so and in two weeks we'll be going to istanbul uh, and uh, we have a european tour this this spring as well so so there's we've discussed we're discussed um other plans and we'll see what happens in this summer breeze open air festivals obviously uh, largely attended a lot of these open air festivals are largely attended so it must be good to kind of get your music out to possibly people that haven't heard of you or people that aren't really into the genre yet it, it's pretty amazing I, I it's i i came i come from a, a different musical background and Ten years ago, I wasn't really prepared. I didn't know what to expect, but uh, you you can have your uh, sort of images of what, what what it will be like, and and I think I had my probably I was I had some prejudice or was, what would the what will the metal audience or the typical metal audience be like, and it turned out that it would I I had no idea that it would be so emotional for me as well. And I had no idea of how much the music would affect the audience because it's such an emotional thing. Uh, I see people being really moved by these big bombastic songs and the 
dynamics. Um, it, I mean, I, we have, besides from music, I have, a, I have the ability to, to, to move from singing very fragile and, and making that shift into something very powerful and, and forceful, and, and which is, um, so, so the, the, the audience is really on an emotional journey <laughs> when they, they attend an, an Avatarium concert. Uh, you're approaching the 10th anniversary of Avatarium, which is no small feat because a lot of bands don't don't make it 10 years anymore, especially more of the modern rock bands that don't get a lot of label support and stuff like that. So are you guys planning anything special to celebrate your 10th anniversary? I think we should. Uh, I have no, no uh, plans to talk about um, this evening, but hopefully we will celebrate it would be great to, to, to play our first, of course, our first album in, in whole. I would, it's such a cool, such a cool album. And I, I would love to play that um, and, and make some kind of um, celebration concert here. So going back 10 years, what do you remember about <laughs> putting together that first album? I, I remember not having any expectations. I was just... Marcus called me and, and, and asked if I wanted to do some demo vocals on a couple of tracks and and I did. I came down to the studio and I met that time I was engaged me and Marcus and he had told me that he, he was working in the, with this project and I met with Leif for the first time, I think. After singing, probably Moon Horse, yeah, I think we, we were quite surprised. I was I was very surprised. I think we all were very surprised about how great it sounded. The combination of my voice and that that composition and and the sound of of uh, Leif's song and, and so yeah. It, it I was I didn't know what to expect. I just thought that oh this is this is just this is great. What a great evening we had in the studio. And that's that, that's it. And we were, and it turned out that we, we would be offered these record deals and things just started moving from there. And after that, of course, it's, it's been a lot of, it's been such a great learning process for me. And I've, I've been so privileged to work with, alongside with Leif Edling and learning from, from and watching his, his, learning from his craftsmanship. And also what I think I've, so, so for me, it's been, yeah, I mean, I know I can sing, but I, I also knew that I had to move forward as a songwriter, uh, learning from not only from such a great songwriter as Leif, but also learning from watching him and, and being around him and, and his great musical integrity to just focus on your vision and uh, focus on your own preferences. Um, I think that's that's been very important to to learn. Uh, do you work on any other projects besides Avatarium and and guesting on the Candlemass album? Have you done anything else recent? Musically, this takes up all my focus, and so I'm, which I'm, I'm 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 happy about. You need to. You need to focus, but I do other things in life. I, I also, a couple of days a week, I work as a psychotherapist. And so I, I have, um, and I'm a mother of a four-year-old, so it's it's quite hectic. <laughs> <laughs> but so there, it's, uh, I'm, I'm very privileged to also to, I have, I feel that I have so much inspiration in life that also, enables me to write, to, um, to grow as a human being, and I can use that in my music. And I'm happy to be able to focus on, on, on Avatarium and writing music with Avatarium. Well, those are all the questions I have for you today, uh, Jeannie Ann. Uh, the new album, Death, Where's Your Sting, comes out October 21st on AFM Records. It's a fantastic record. This was the first time I I listened to an Avatarium album and it hooked me right in. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you very much for, for having me. And 
hopefully this it will be uh, intriguing for your listeners to to uh, listen to our album as well once again i want to thank Jeannie ann smith of avatarium for coming on the rock is george podcast check out their new album death where is your sting out now on afm records head over to your favorite music streaming app take a listen to the album if you like what you hear go out and buy a physical copy support the artist for all things Avatarium, head over to their Facebook page, facebook.com slash Avatarium Official. I also want to thank Dustin Hardman of AFM Records for making this interview possible. You've been great. I've been George Dion. I'll see you again soon. <laughs>